Okie dokie. Oh, in here, Gabby, let me get you the uh, grand paper. You can just put it down that last one if you want to. All right. You're welcome. Thank you. Was there? Four. Should be four. Or did we have a one-up yesterday? We did have one yesterday before the quiz? Okay. Okay. Here we go. So we're going to do kind of like a brief foray into um, square roots and stuff like that. We will do a more in-depth uh, look at square roots at a separate unit, okay? We'll have an entire unit where we do square roots and cube roots. But in order to solve some of the quadratic equations that we're going to be seeing, right, or in order to, you know, one extra strategy to use, we're going to need to look at square roots. So that's why I gave you what I did for the warm up. <laughs> All right, so just to help you kind of like build this organization into your thinking and kind of give you an idea of where we are on our little adventure, okay, in this unit. We started this unit, okay, with graphing quadratic functions, right? And there were three different function forms we should be familiar with when we come to graphing quadratic equations. Standard, vertex form, intercept form, right? Those are the three that we should go to graph. Once we kind of graph, and this is going to, again, kind of be our tempo for the rest of this class at each new unit. We're going to, you know, have some new function that we're going to be graphing, and we'll also solve equations using that new function, or, you know, relationships using that new function. Equation that it equalizes and stuff. So we have now done the graphing section of this unit, right, where we know how to graph the quadratics. Now we're going to be focusing, like I said, on solving. Okay, that's the other part. We've already been solving, right? Factoring was like the big one we just made our way through, where you know we, you know, um, had a equal to one or a not equal to one, and use the AC method or the guess and check, whatever method you you know prefer there. Um, and so we're going to be looking at solving quadratic equations today using square roots. Then that will lead us into taking the square root of negative numbers, which on Monday we'll look at doing, uh, doing math with complex numbers. So I, remember I from, you know, algebra one, we'll do that. Um, then we're going to look at um, quadratic formula and using a discriminant, okay? Um, we'll do quadratic inequalities and systems of quadratic equations too. Systems, you know, one to one, solve one to one. And then we'll do like a, uh, like a word problem slash quadratic application stuff, but I've kind of been interweaving that as well as we go. Monday of the following week then will be a review day, Tuesday of the following week will be test. So the rest of our time we're going to be spending solving quadratic equations and inequalities, okay, U using different strategies and stuff like that. Oh, well, I'll do completing the square one day too, completing the square as well. So, um, Okay, okay. So um, let's talk about some, well, okay, let's, let's do this. So this is called, um, mm, 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 mm. so let's do this. A, I'll do this basic stuff. This is basic stuff. Frozen. Oh, no. Unfreeze. A number r is a square root um, of a number s. If a number r is a square root of a number s, if okay, r squared is equal to s. Okay. So as an example here, okay, um, since 3 squared is equal to 9 and negative 3 squared is equal to 9, 
okay? The two square roots of nine are three and negative three. Okay? And three, more specifically, like I said earlier, referred to earlier, alluded to earlier, is called the principal <coughs> square root. Okay, the principal square root. The positive square root. Okay, and that is the answer you should give when you see square root of nine in the y. Okay, so if you see what's the square root of nine, you should answer three. Not three and negative three. Okay. It's only when you have the equation that you want to put that plus or minus part in there. Okay. So um, we have you know the expression. Um, so square root of s. This is this symbol right here is called the radical symbol. Or it's called a radical. Okay. If you want to, you can put a two in here as well, right? You put a little two there, that's another way to do it too. That's called radical. Okay, and that actually comes from the Latin. Okay, so the Latin word for root is radix, R A D I X. So then, or that could be Greek actually. It might be Greek. Anyway, the, the base of the word radical is radix, which means root, which is also where you get the word radish, because where does a radish come from? The ground. And it's like a root vegetable, right? So a radish, radix, radical. They're all related to each other. Isn't that crazy? You're maybe not, okay, but I think it is pretty neat. But I'm a math teacher, so go figure, okay? Okay, and the thing underneath of it, the S there, that's called the radicand, okay? The thing underneath the square root symbol is called the radicand. Right? Super, super basic stuff, right? But now let's get into some properties. So for these properties, please assume that A is greater than zero and that B is also greater than zero. Okay? So we have the product property. And I already alluded to this in the warm-up. But if we have the square root of A times B, so A B in the radicand or A B the radicand there, on the radical. This, in general, is equal to the square root of A times the square root of B. <clears throat> Additionally, we have the quotient property. Okay. And that's equal to the square root of A divided by the square root of B. Addition slash subtraction property. Okay, note no addition or subtraction property. And I get it, right? It's like you guys using those beautiful brains that you have and you want to just like generalize to everything, right? And I get it, it'd be really nice, you know? Sometimes you come across a problem like this. It's so tempting, like, man, square root of A plus B, it would be really nice if it was just the square root of A plus the square root of B, but it is not in general. Okay, so please don't do that. <coughs> Likewise with subtraction. Square root of A minus B in the right hand like that, okay, is not in general equal to square root of A minus square root of B. Here's a tip that I'm going to give to you guys that I use when I was a student, okay, to kind of help me jog my memory sometimes because I hated memorizing things, all right? 
So what you can do if you get to like a situation, right, where you aren't able to look this up, like a test or a quiz, right, and you get stuck, you're like, oh crap, am I allowed to break this up or not? All right, these properties are like not that easy to remember, right? They're kind of just like in one ear, out the other maybe. But you can use math that you know to help you figure this out. So I mean, as an example, right, if you want to check to see if you can break up a product in a square root like this, put some numbers in that you know. Okay, so for example, for A and B, if you were to make it like root four times nine like this, okay, and I'm saying this even if you have a problem like this where you know in a where you're given variables, plug in some numbers and see if you can make it work or not, right? Bless you. Bless you again. You. Right, I should wait until you're done before I say it the first time. Yeah. All right. Do it both ways, right? Do the square root of four times nine, do the square root of four times the square root of nine. See if you get the same answer. So on the left-hand side here, what should we do first according to order of operations? Over here, how should I simplify this first? What should I do first here? Now, well, I don't want, so I'm not trying to solve the equation. I mean, so just like block this off. If I wanted to simplify this, what would I do first? Multiply, four times nine, right? I get 36. Okay, what is the square root of 36? Just six, right? We're not in, like this is an equation, I guess, but there's no variables and stuff, so we're just gonna say it's six right now, yeah? Okay, what is the square root of four? Two. What is the square root of nine? Three. Two times three is six. So aha, we cut again, this is not proving it, right? because proving this is a very specific example. But I mean, at least you can kind of convince yourself, okay, this works, so it probably will work for all the other ones. Now let's do it with a false property here. Let's say that we have the square root of four plus nine, and we want to know, does that equal the square root of four plus the square root of nine? Okay, so I'm gonna show it with one of these false properties here that don't work. <clears throat> all right, what's four plus nine? 13, so we have the square root of 13 here. Okay, on this side. What's the square root of four? Two, what's the square root of nine? Three, two plus three is? Does five equal the square root of 13? No, so does the square root of a sum equal the sum of the individual square roots? In general, no, right? This is something you can do when you're on your own and you don't have someone to kind of help you out, okay? If you're not sure if you can do a certain property, put some, replace it with some numbers, okay? Do it the way it's written. Do it the way you want to be able to do it, right? You want to break this up and see if you get the same thing. If you get the same thing, then you're allowed to do this. You're allowed to break it up, okay? Like, you did, like we did here, you're allowed to break it up this way. If you don't end up getting the same thing with breaking it up or not breaking it up, then you know you can't do that, okay? And that's an easy way to check yourself before you mess up. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a strategy for you, a little tip. I don't know if that's gonna help you or not, but it helped me as a student, so hopefully it'll help you, okay? Um, so one of the things we need to be able to do with square roots then, using these properties here that we've listed, again, only these are the good properties to use there, okay? Um, we want to be able to simplify. Okay. And there's two kind of things we need to look out for to, to show that a square root expression is simplified. Okay, one, no radicand has a perfect square factor other than one. So in other words, you can't divide any more perfect squares out of that radicand, what's inside the radical, other than one, and, okay, no radical in the denominator. Okay. Now, for those of you that plan on getting to calculus, 
Number two, you get to ignore that one. Okay. So for whatever reason, the AP uh, people, for um, you know their rules or their expectations, they don't rec they don't care if you have a radical in the denominator or not. So like when I teach pre-calculus, I don't normally make my students rationalize their denominators, but since we're in algebra two, we're going to do it. Okay. So. Yep, yep, yep. We'll be doing this. So we're going to have to make sure both of these are true before we can say our square root is completely simplified. Okie dokie. All right, let's actually do some problems here. Enough of this mess. <coughs> Am I okay to move it up that much? Let's do some examples. So simplify. All right, so let's just do um, okay. square root of 8. Does 80 have a factor that is a perfect square? In other words, is there a perfect square that divides 80? Ah! Oh, I lost it. I heard yeses, I heard noes. Can't be both, right? It's one or the other. Is there a perfect square that divides eight? Four is one of them. We could do four, okay? Did anyone have a different idea besides four? So, okay. Eight? Eight's not a perfect square. It would divide it, but eight's not a perfect square. It could be helpful though because eight could break up into a four and a two. Yeah, so 16, okay? And 16 would be the, the quicker one because it's the biggest of them. But we'll use the four because that's what we said first, right? And you guys do whichever one you see. If you can see that this divides by four, do it. If you see it divides by 16, do that one, okay? The bigger the square root you pull out, the quicker it'll be for the simplification. All right, so this is equal to root four times 20, right? Which is equal to root four times root 20. Now, I am writing this out very explicitly. You guys can skip some of these steps if you want to, if you feel comfortable, okay? And I will start to skip them now, but because we're learning it this way now, I'm going to do it this way. Okay. So, back to our question. Can I now factor 20 using any perfect squares? Four again, yeah, the four. So, two, root four, and in fact, I'm just going to go ahead and start skipping steps now, okay? So 20, root 20 is root 4 times root 5, which will be 2 times 2 times the square root of 5, which is 4 root 5. Okay? There you can see Christian's 16 that he mentioned, right? If we had done the 16, it would have become a 4, and we'd have just root 5. We would have been done quicker, you know? But again, you take as many as the square root out as you need to. Ash? Oh, uh, if you're done, uh, you can bring it up here, and I'll take it. Oh, if you're fine with it, if you want to use the factor tree method, that's fine. And if there's ever a problem, Christian, where it's like you want to see it with the factor tree stuff, you let me know. But I'm going to be doing it this way, if that's okay with you. But if there's ever a time where you're like, Miss Wick, could you just show it with the factor tree? I'll do that way too. Okay? But I'm just going to do it this way because it saves more space. The factor tree takes up, you know, more space going the vertical one. But you do it however you want. Does that sound fair? Yeah. Okay. If it's not, let me know. If you feel like you know you want me to show it both ways every time, we can talk about that. But I also want to be able to get stuff done here too. So, all right, let's try another one here. We'll do one more and then I'll try some other kinds of problems. All right, how about, um, you guys go ahead and try that one. Okay, this is the other property we talked about. that up there for you to see. Okay, so try that one real quick. Over 16, and then you want to simplify the 
by the square root of the numerator divided by the square root of the times. So split it up, right? And then do your individual square roots. Good to go from there. Kayla, you're going to face with me. Did you hear what I said to see on the end? Yeah, you got it. Okay, so I'm going to use this right here. I got my piece for this. So square root of the top and square root of the bottom. So your property that you want to use here for this one? Yeah, like that. So keep the, keep the division there. Right? So the division And then when you did the square root, you didn't just the square root. You did the square root. Right? Yeah. So then you rewrite that. I'm going to root side over 4. Right? So that's the answer? Okay. <laughs> okay, so root 7 over root 16. Okay. Are there any perfect squares that divide out of 7 besides 1? No. So root 7 over... What's the square root of 16? Four. Four, right? And that's simplified. Is, is there a square root in our denominator? There's no square root in the denominator, right? So we are done here. Okay, we can finish. All right? Questions on anything so far? And of course, you know, if, if you had to simplify, like for example, if this root 7 was something else that you simplified, you simplify just like you see up here. And if the denominator needs to be simplified, you simplify just like you see up here. Okay, so do what you got to do there. <coughs> Ooh. Okay, all right, here we go. So, let's try another one here. Okay, root 5 over 2. Root, square root of 5 over 2. Okay, square root of 5 over 2. Okay, so we'll break this up, right? Make it root 5 over root 2, square root of 2. Right? Are there any perfect squares that we can uh, factor out of 5? No. Just one, right? That will reduce it. So in other words, that is as simple as it gets. Can we uh, factor any perfect squares out of two besides one? No. No. So we have a problem because we ended up with a radical in the denominator, which we're not supposed to have. So we need to get rid of that square root of two. Okay. The way we're going to do that is we're going to multiply. Okay. We're going to multiply by something that is going to make this a perfect square. The easiest way to do that is just to multiply the denominator by another root 2. Right? Because if I multiply root 2 times root 2, that becomes root what? 4, four right? 2 times 2 will make the 4 there. So I'll have a root 4. The problem is, though, I can't just come in to this value and just like multiply its denominator by a root 2. That changes the value of this number. So what we'll do is I won't multiply just the denominator by root 2. I will also, also multiply the numerator by a root 2. Okay. Because when I multiply the numerator and denominator by a root 2, what is the value of this number right here? 1, right? Square root of 2 divided by square root of 2 is 1. If I multiply something by 1, does that change the value of the original thing? If I multiply this by a 1, does that change the value of this? It does not, right? So this multiplying by root 2 over root 2 will help us to cancel out the square root in the denominator, but it will not change the value because we're just multiplying by 1. So uh, what is root 5 times root 2 going to be then? Root 10. And what is the square root of 4? 2. Two. Can I factor any perfect squares out of root 10 now? Nope, so it's still root 10. There will be times when you can factor more perfect squares out of that denominator once you rationalize. Okay, so this is called rationalizing the denominator. Okay. We take something that was irrational. Square root of 2 is irrational, right? Because the square root of 2 is a, it's decimal, goes on forever, never repeats in any sort of regular pattern or anything like that. <coughs> we take something that's irrational, we make it rational. Okay, that's a rational number, 2. 
because the number two can be written as a fraction of two integers. Okay, so that makes it rational. Okay. <clears throat> okay. One more example here. And then we'll do an equation or two. Ooh. Okay. Can I simplify this square root of 2 at all? Are there any perfect squares I can factor out of root 2 besides 1? No. Okay. Don't write this part down. I'm just going to show you here. Okay. So we have a problem in that we have a square root in our denominator. Okay, so don't write anything down just yet. Just let me show you here. Um, we could follow our strategy from up here where, okay, yeah, we had a square root in our denominator. It was two, root 2. And we can just multiply the top and bottom by that root 2, and that allows us to simplify the denominator. If I do the same strategy here, if I multiply the, don't write this down. Just follow along. If I do the same strategy here, and I multiply the top and bottom by that root 2, okay, right? That's not a bad idea necessarily. It's kind of trying to apply what we did here to here, but let's see what happens. I get 3 root 2. When I multiply this denominator by root 2, what over here gets multiplied with root 2? 7 and what else gets multiplied with root 2? This root 2 as well. In other words, we're going to have 7 root 2 plus root 4. Right? The root 2 distributes to the 7 and the root 2 there. Womp womp. That simplifies to 2, but now we have a root 2 here. And if we keep multiplying by root 2 over 2, we're just going to have the root 2 over 2. It's going to be a problem, right? So, so this did not help us. This does simplify to 2. That's good, but that's going to be a 7 root 2. And we're still have a square root in the denominator. So this is not what we're going to do, okay? When we come across a situation like this, where we have other stuff with that root 2, and it, won't be more, it shouldn't be more complicated than this, we're going to do this instead. Okay? We're going to multiply it by what is known as the conjugate. So 7 plus root 2 multiplied by the conjugate 7 minus root 2. Okay. So let me just talk about that here real quick. Um, A plus the square root of B and a minus the square root of b are conjugates. Okay, these are conjugates. So if you have an a plus root b in your denominator, multiply by a minus root b over a minus root b. If you have a minus root b in your denominator, then you're going to multiply by its conjugate, a plus root b. Okay. So notice it's not opposites, right? We have a word for opposites. These are not opposites. A stays the same. It's the sign in front of the root b that changes. And now watch what happens when we use this conjugate here. Okay? When I multiply on the top, it'll distribute. So it'll be 3 times 7, 21. 3 times minus root 2, minus 3 root 2. That's still pretty yucky, but that's okay. The numerator can be pretty yucky still. The denominator, though, let's multiply this out. 7 plus root 2 times 7 minus root 2. When I go to multiply this out, I need to use FOIL here. Right? I have two things here. Multiply the two things here. So it'll be 7 times 7, 49. Okay, outer, so minus 7 root 2, inner, plus 7 root 2, and then the last, positive root 2 times negative root 2 is negative root 4. Question that? You all done? Okay, and now let me simplify this, because this does simplify. In fact, do you guys see anything? What cancels out here? The, the 7 root 2, right. The minus 7 root 2 and the plus 7 root 2 cancel out. And that will always happen when you multiply by the conjugate. Okay, so the new rate will stay the same. And then we'll have 49 minus, what's the square root of 4? 
49 minus 2. So we'll finally end up with 21 minus 3 root 2 all over 47. And that will be our final answer. We'll stop there. Okay. So with that simplified, well, that follows the guidelines that I gave you guys, right? No radicands has a perfect square factor other than 1, right? We cannot simplify root 2 anymore. No radical in the denominator. There's no more radical in the denominator. You've simplified this as much as we can. Okay, that's it. Okay. Questions on any of that? So that's another thing you should be able to do there. Okay, another thing you should be able to do. All right. And I'll show you one equation, and we'll get you guys started on your assignment here. So I think we should be okay. Otherwise. Let's do one equation here. Um, sure, let's do this one. So now I'll actually show you how we're going to use this when it comes to solving quadratic equations, right? So let's say I've got uh, uh, something like this. Key thing you want to do here, and I'll write, I'll star this here. Isolate the squared expression, then square root. Okay, I isolate the square expression, then square root. Do not square root. I mean, I guess technically you could square root both sides here. So I should back off a little bit there. But anyway, if you want something that's going to be a good guideline to follow in general, get that square root expression by itself, then square root and solve, you know, from there. Okay? So here's our squared expression, right? X plus 3 is being squared, right? But is it by itself? Is the X plus 3 squared by itself? No, what's with it? The one fifth. We gotta get rid of that one fifth before we can square root. Technically we don't have to, we could square root both sides at this point, but it's gonna be easier if we, if we get rid of the one fifth first. Okay? So how do we get rid of a one fifth? Divide both sides by one five, one fifth, or yes, multiply by the reciprocal. Okay? You do not need a calculator for this problem. But Ms. Witt, how am I gonna divide seven by one fifth? You won't. You're going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 5 over 1. Okay? Again, it's time to put those old ways of algebra behind us where we just blindly type things into calculators. Divide both sides by 1 fifth. No. Multiply by the reciprocal. You can do this math in your head or on a piece of paper. Okay? 35. Okay? Is our squared expression, is it by itself now? Yes. Yeah. Can I take the square root then? Yes. Square root, square root. Okay? When you square root of square, we're we'll left with just x plus 3 equals root 35. Don't forget to write a plus or minus root 35 now. We're in an equation setting, so we need to put that plus or minus in there. This is very important. square root. And our final step. Get the x by, what's, what's, we still need to solve for x, right? So what do I need to do so? Subtract 3, right? So we get x equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 35. Okay. Um, the previous step would also be a good place to simplify that square root of 35, so I apologize there. Um, the previous step would be a good place to simplify that square root of 35, but are there any perfect squares that divide 35? Okay, so we can't simplify that with 35. But this is where you'd want to simplify it. I mean, you can simplify it wherever you want, really. But I'd encourage you to do it right here, you know, if you can't simplify it anymore. 
but there's no perfect squares to divide it. Okay, so there are two solutions, right? Negative three plus root 35, negative three minus root 35. Are you feeling pretty good there? Does anyone want to see another example of solving a square root equation? Anyone want to see another one or want to see a different one? Feeling all right? Okay, then I'm going to give you guys your assignment if you don't have any further questions. All right. Um, so I'm going to post this here in just a second, but it is again out of the green book. Okay. Um, it's going to be section 4.5, starting on page 269. Okay. <clears throat> I want to do numbers 3, 7, 11, and 15. Um, 25, 28, 31. Thirty-eight. I also want you to do, and I want you to use the function um, h of t equal to negative sixteen t squared plus h sub zero, or h at the initial height. That makes sense. I can read the problem. And then also. Number 41. I'll post this right now. 